What's up, guys? Welcome to the Coach Fitz Podcast, where we simplify exercise and nutrition so that you can get leaner, stronger, and become more energized. I'm your host, Brian Fitzsimmons. Let's get it started. We are live. We are recording. Welcome back to another episode of the Coach Fitz Podcast. Today, we're going to be going over a number of topics. Um, I'm going to introduce because I feel like doing fitness stuff week to week to week can get a little bit bland. So I'm going to bring in something that I like doing, which is watching movies, TV shows, audiobooks. So I'm just going to start doing like recommendations and reviews to start off the episode. So hopefully you guys can get some good ideas from it or you could DM me and send some of your recommendations and we could go back and forth and yeah, just come up with good ideas for everybody to watch. <laughs> we'll all be on the same page. Um, so I'll do like one of each. I'll do like a audiobook, a series, and a movie. So to catch up a little bit, um, no movies lately, but I've been on a big TV kick or a show kick, I guess you could call it. Um, so I'm going to start off with the one that I just knocked out and like felt like two days, which was Cobra Kai. If you haven't already, I 100% recommend watching it. Um, fair warning, if you're in the age group like myself that was post-1980s movies and you don't really appreciate them that much, probably not going to like it. But I mean, I grew up watching Karate Kid and I saw Bloodsport and Top Gun and all these other great great movies that they just have a different feel to them and it's like i anybody who knows the movies i'm talking about you get what i'm saying um but yeah like cobra kai kind of fits the bill of like really like subpar acting and writing <laughs> like i'm not gonna lie the the lines are a little cringy at times but the story the heart of it is really really good and it's a lot of action. So like, if you need something like mindless to watch, it's very good. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. So if you appreciate eighties movies, it's right up your alley. If you enjoyed the karate kid movies, definitely up your alley. Um, the next one is Bubba Fett. That one is as I'm making this podcast two episodes in and I'm hyped. They are so good so far, like really, really good right off the bat, just like the Mandalorian. Like it, follows the same kind of premise as far as like they really don't wait to build the story like it's just go 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 <laughs> so maybe by star wars standards it's a little bit like it's not a as fast or it's not as a slow roll as the movies are like the movies kind of take a little bit to get going but these series are just bang right off the bat and last but not least is <laughs> gray's anatomy it's a throwback um but yeah me and my girlfriend have been Rewatching it because she got me hooked about this time last year and binged the whole thing up until I want to say season 15. And then it just got so political and like so, like, so, like people standing on their soapbox ish that it just got hard to watch. But the first 10 seasons are straight gold. I freaking love them. And for anybody that knows what happens in season 10, you can understand why. Um, why the series kind of lo lost its lust, luster, I don't know, lost its lust, whatever. It just wasn't the same after somebody, somebody that I will not mention for anybody who's going to go and watch this when that somebody is no longer on the show for a certain reason. Um, and yeah, those are my, those are my shows. Actually, I got a movie recommendation and it's the one that if any of you have listened to any of the guest shows that we've done, I always ask the guests, what's their favorite movie at the very end of the podcast? Because it's just one of those questions you don't really hear a lot. And I'm like, oh, that'll be unique, but I freaking love movies. And my answer is always the same when I say favorite movie of all time is Braveheart. And I literally just watched it yesterday and it's still so damn good. It's got everything. Oh, it's a, it's a period piece. So if you like back in the medieval times, like it's great. Um, 
it's got a love story in there. It's got action. It's funny. There's grown men mooning <laughs> other men in in uh, uniform and armor. And the guys on the English side are like, what the hell's going on? It's fantastic. Um, and then the line at the end with where he screams freedom still gives me chills. Uh, yeah. Can't go wrong with Braveheart, especially on like a cold winter day where you got nothing else to do. It's a good like, I think it's like two and a half, three hours. It's perfect. And then for the audiobook, this one I am currently reading and I'm really liking it a lot. And I know it's probably going to get a couple of weird, weird reactions, but the book I'm reading right now is called Strong Women Lift Each Other Up by Molly Galbraith. Galbraith. She is one of the co-founders of Girls Gone Strong. And because my population of clients is all pretty much 90% women, as a guy, this book is like incredible as far as like painting the picture of the challenges that women go through that like as guys, we just really don't take into account. <laughs> like we just don't think about it because we're dudes. We don't really like, it's not our experience. So getting a peek behind the curtains as far as like what that experience is like helps me as a coach a ton with like empathizing in certain situations and understanding where people are coming from. And then for women, it's like the way that Molly wrote it, it, it seems like it's a very good book as far as just like knowing you're not alone and like get, she shares experiences that like I will a hundred percent bet like many of the women that are reading this book can relate to and just how she struggled with business and how like everything tied in with fitness and mental health and all that. And it's just a really good read on if you're, struggling with situations like that when it comes to like she talks about like when she got divorced and um how her like she mentally was dealing with the challenges of making the what is now the powerhouse of girls gone strong the website the products and everything like that so very good read and i can't wait to keep going with it and yeah that that is like i think it's probably going to be on one of the maybe my top five list of best books I've read in the past year. I actually, I can't even say read. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a faker. I don't read books. I listen to them because as soon as my eyes hit that fat paragraph with a lot of words, my brain just shuts off. So I <laughs> found a loophole with ADHD and it turns out when you listen to stuff, when you're mindlessly driving in the car, it sticks a little bit better for me at least. All right. Now, on to the main topics. We're going to be talking about three different things. One, same thing equals the same result. Second is going to be staying on track with flexible workouts. And then the last is going to be tricks for stress eating and drinking. So let's start with same thing equals same result. The reason that I put this down is because now that we're in January, a lot of people go at like trying to hit fitness goals with the same mindset every single year. They're like, oh, I just didn't stick to it good enough last year. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did last year, but this time I'm really going to stick to it. And it's like the, the saying that's going around now, it's like if a diet resulted in you gaining the weight back, like when, once you came off it, it's not a successful diet. Like success means that you keep it off for the long term. And when you're doing it, like this is my, my vision of success for myself or for clients is enjoying the process of reaching your goal and be keeping your health along the way and keeping it off for the long term. Because if you can't get the whole package, then there's something missing. For a lot of people, that could be the fact that like a common thing is, oh, I'll just cut carbs and then. I'll just do that until I lose the weight and then I'll eat, then I'll eat normal and eating normal equates to eating a ton of the bread and trying to catch up on what you missed out on for the past, like one to three months. And then boom, all the weight comes right back. Or another thing that happens a lot is people will go into some crazy hard 
fitness routine where they're working out six, seven days a week and they'll do it for like, I don't know, 75 hard or like they'll do CrossFit and just see how long they can last. And then what happens is they end up burning out because either they get injured because they jump in and do way too much, way too soon before their body can even acclimate to the workload um, or they just mentally can't do it anymore because working out and forcing yourself to move your life around in situations where normally you can't get a workout in. So you're like, oh, I'll take a rest day and do it the next. But if you're forcing a workout every single day, life gets in the way and you're sacrificing things along the way, experiences like joy in doing something that you would have done rather than that workout. And that eats away at you and it really can suck. And when you look back on it, and I speak from experience because there were, when I was getting ready for bodybuilding shows, I missed out on like, I missed out on parties. I missed out on going out with my family. I missed out on like experiences that I would, that looking back, I wish I would have like, I wish I wouldn't have made that choice to sacrifice. I'm convinced that I have, uh, had relationships with friends suffer because of it, because I was fresh out of college and everybody's trying to hang out. And I'm like, Oh no, I'm the body. I'm bodybuilding. I can't do anything. And then years later, I don't get invites because they're like, Oh, he probably doesn't want to come out. So all stuff to think about when you're doing your diet, like, can you fit your life into it? And do you want to sacrifice things that you really shouldn't have to? So same thing equals same result. Don't go with an approach that does not work. If you tried something last year and this year you're restarting from square one, that thing did not work. It is time to try something new. Going in the direction of a more balanced diet and a more sustainable workout routine is more times than not going to work out much, much better. So Starting out, if it's like you're, you're starting fresh and you want to try something new, start with this. Three meals, two snacks. Every meal gets a protein and vegetable or fruit. Like I like doing like a, like I like telling clients protein and fruit in the morning and then protein and veggie for lunch and dinner. You could do that. And then you get two snacks. So you get like a serving of whatever. So protein, carbs, fat, whatever you choose as long as it's around 200 calories, give or take like 50. So 150 to 250. And you get two of those a day. And if you want to drink, a drink counts as a snack. So limit yourself to two drinks, ideally, and get your three meals in or one snack, one drink, you know, and that's it for nutrition. Just do that. And you'd be surprised at how amazing you could feel. And on top of that, with the workouts, do three a week. That's it, three a week. And right now, I'm just going to keep my 21 day challenge one up. It's a body weight program that you could do anywhere, anytime, no equipment needed at all. And it hits every single muscle in your body. So do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Just take some breaks here and there. Try not to do all three Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because you're probably going to be sore as hell. And when you're sore, you don't want to do anything. Um, and see how that goes. Just you could run that for months and see incredible progress. Because if you can get, if you've seen some of these insane transformations with Beachbody, P90X, like their programming is complete shit. Like it is a terrible, terrible way to have somebody work out because the progress has such a sh short ceiling. But people do well because they can do it consistently. They can do it from the privacy of their own homes and they can just keep it going. Same thing with my program, except it's actually intelligently programmed. <laughs> There's no like gimmicky stuff about it. It's concrete. Just do this. So go ahead to the YouTube channel. I'll link it in the show notes. And yeah, you could check it out. All you do is there are... I got to double check. I think it's four, maybe five. I think I added it. So there should be five exercises on that YouTube playlist. And what you do is, so I'm going to pull it up right here. Let me see. That way I can give you accurate 
information here. Okay, so we got the wall sit to start off. For the wall sit, 30 to 60 seconds. Try and get those knees at 90 degrees, keeping your back flat. And yeah, 30 to 60 seconds. Once that gets easy, hold something, make it harder. Um, hold a kid, hold a milk jug, a water jug, whatever. Then you got elevated push-ups, which you could literally do on your couch. Do five repetitions and then go lower. Or if you just are stuck with that one uh, elevation, that one level that you're at, try and get an extra repetition every single time you do the workout. Then we got body weight, single leg bridge. So for the bridges, you're just pushing your butt up and down in the air. Same concept as the push-ups. Like, for the bridge, do 10 on each leg. And then once you get really good at that, push it, try and get as many reps as you can, and then add a rep every single week. Then we got T holds, same as the wall sit 30 to 60 seconds, you're just holding your hands up in the air while you lay down. And once you get really good at that, you can go for a longer time, or you can hold stuff in your hands like DVDs, books, water bottles, whatever. And last but not least, so it was five. <laughs> Last but not least is the elbow plank. Normal plank, elbows down, and hold it as long as you can. Then when you get really good at that, you can either go for longer or you could pick one foot up at a time, back and forth while you do it. You can reach one hand forward, alternating back and forth. There are many different ways to do it. If you just look up plank on my YouTube, there's plenty of ways to make it harder. So those five things hit everything. Do that for 20 to 40 minutes, as many rounds as you can get and progress. See if you can get more rounds. Notice that's what it is, is the progression. It's not do this workout all the time, same exact repetition, same exact rounds and like Beachbody, P90X, the exact same workout every single time. No, there is progression here. You want to go longer. You want to do more reps. You want to do more rounds because that's going to drive your body to change. That's what's going to make the difference in the long term. And you're going to feel a whole lot better. So, yeah, I think that covers it when it comes to the same equals same. Same, same for any of you that have seen the interview. Same, same. <laughs> um, on to the next one, staying on track with flexible workouts. This kind of is in the same ballpark as what I was just talking about. You want to have something that you can do and be flexible with. You don't want something that's so rigid that you're stuck doing six, seven days a week and you're sacrificing and all that. Okay, here's a couple of ideas as for, to make it so that you can do them anywhere, anytime. First off is... You want to try and make it body weight when you're starting out, if you can, or using body weight uh, war workouts as a backup. So can't make it to the gym. Maybe your state country is on lockdown with the given situation. Body weight workout just to have in your back pocket, just in case to keep you doing something. Um, or what I do, because I'm always between gyms, like whether that be crunch down by my girlfriend, crunch up where I'm at, or the garage gym, picking workouts and more specifically picking exercises that you can do in every situation that you're in. So if you bounce around a lot, like, or you're like going between at home workouts and in gym workouts, make sure everything is pretty much dumbbells and bands, because if you're relying on a machine and you can't do it, then you need a backup plan because doing nothing is usually not a good idea. So like, even if it's like, for example, if I wanted to do like a lying hamstring curl at the gym, but when I'm at home, I don't have a hamstring machine just hanging out in my garage. So instead doing like a bench ISO hold, like the one I just put up on TikTok, but it'll probably be up on YouTube sometime soon. Um, or doing like banded curls where you lay on your belly and you pull a, your heel to your butt with a band around your heel. Having options like that helps a ton. Another thing is doing full body over bro splits because for anybody that doesn't know what a bro split is, I'm talking about Monday chest, Tuesday back, Wednesday legs, Thursday shoulders, Friday arms. At least that was my bro split back in the day. Um, when you do that, 
again, you fall into the trap of sometimes life gets in the way. So if for some reason something comes up on Wednesday, like your kid gets sick or like you have to study for a test or something comes up, you are now not doing legs. An entire half of your body is not getting work. And then if we're trying to do something like burn a ton of calories so that you can help aid weight loss, that's going to put a big wrench in your plan for the week. So, and doing that over and over and over again, gets you suboptimal results. So instead of that, doing something like a full body workout where you hit one of everything is good because at the end of the day, if let's say you're aiming for four workouts a week, but you only get three, all those muscle groups have still been worked. So not perfect, but better than missing completely. And yeah, that will pretty much do the trick when it comes to flexibility in your workouts. Always just, again, like the recurring theme week to week, having a backup plan, having something that you can do that keeps you from sitting on your butt doing nothing. And last but not least, because I got to wrap this up because my girlfriend's parents are almost here. Um, Last thing is tricks for stress eating slash drinking. Now, this is a good one because it's actually something I've come across more recently. Like I know I've worked with people in the past that have had this issue, but most recently with the online clients with the holidays coming around. And I think just the stresses of everything, like they've either developed stress, eating, drinking, or it's rearing its ugly head and coming back into their lives. So here's a couple of tips that we've been using that seem to have been working pretty well. Um, First and foremost, the one thing I tell people right off the bat is when you catch yourself getting stressed and you want to reach for that bag of potato chips, or you want to reach for the bottle of wine is do something that occupies your hands. Because if you're doing something that your hands are involved, you can't grab the glass of water. You can't grab the chips out of the bag. So for me, one thing that I do personally that works really well is I play video games because not only that, I'm moving my hands and they can't really like come off the controller, especially if it's like a live situation. I'm also talking on the mic with my friends or shit talking a 13 year old, something like that. And it really helps take the, the, take the attention away from the hunger or the bored feeling of needing food or the stress that's going on in my life. Um, But another thing that you can do, a couple other things you could do for occupying the hands that have worked are reading a book because holding that book, especially if you have like a paperback or even like a regular one where you, it's got these pages that you don't want to like get grease on or like what, or wine, you don't want it to spill or anything like that. It can be good incentive to not want anything around you that could potentially get on the book. Or another thing that people do is knitting. So I don't know many people my age that do it, but I mean, there are people that like to knit. And doing that takes a lot of time, takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of focus, because you don't want it to be like loose, you don't want it to be lumpy. So you got to get it right. And again, that level of focus takes your mind off of everything going on. And it occupies your hands. So you can't grab the Cheetos because you don't want Cheetos all over this scarf that you're making your your mom, (laughs) or you don't want to accidentally spill some wine on this white I don't know, sweater that you're knitting. I don't know. Um, Yeah, just little stuff like that. Um, Sorry, guys. I I hope that you can't hear the the hair dryer going on. But when you're in an apartment with a female, this is the stuff that you got to work around. (laughs) So good thing it came in at the end. Um, Next is the protein or veggie test. So this is more of a mindset strategy as far as like when you're hungry, whether that be boredom or stress, are you hungry enough to eat a plain chicken breast? Are you hungry enough to have a bland piece of tilapia? Are you hungry enough to have like a stalk of celery? And if the answer is yes, then by all means, go ahead and eat it. But if you're going to eat like overeat on something, overeat on protein and veggies. You really can't go wrong, 
especially like when it comes to protein, there's actually some people that advocate for eating as much protein as you can possibly handle. And it will help you lose weight, which for some people, it totally could, depending on their situation. Um, and yeah, with the veggies, same thing. Like it takes your body with vegetables. It takes your body so much energy, protein too. It takes your body so much energy to break it down that by the time it's broken down, it's almost like a, a net balance of calories burned to break it down to calories it, like calorie intake from that food. So veggies is almost like a balance and then protein. It is a little bit, but it's not as much as if you were to eat like a carbohydrate, like a simple carbohydrate, like sugar or bread or any of that stuff or like fats. Um, yeah. So that's just one thing that you can catch yourself with. If you feel like you're about to make that decision. And that's really what it comes down to is catching yourself being present in the moment and accepting the fact that you feel the way that you feel like labeling it saying, I am stressed, or I am frustrated, or I am pissed. <laughs> and saying that, like, that's how I'm feeling. And this is what I want to do, but I'm not going to do that. So presence is really the key here. Um, and the last thing is walking. So if you feel like you're in that place, go get outside or go on the treadmill or something and walk for 10, 20 minutes. And then when you get back, hopefully you've cleared your head by then, or you've just like been able to walk off any hunger that you had. Um, and another trick while I'm thinking about it, I wish I knew who to give credit for this because I remember back when I was working at my old gym, our boss forwarded this guy and he said, doing farmer carries or just straight up walking backwards helps to de-stress. And I'm like, my initial thought was bullshit. <laughs> and I'm like, I, this is such a load of crap. And then one day I was getting really overwhelmed and I'm like, screw it. You know what? I don't even care. I'm going to give it a try. This is probably bullshit, but I'll give it a try. So I started walking backwards and I'm like, come on. It actually does help. It doesn't erase everything. It doesn't like automatically fix all your problems. But in the moment, it's like, okay, just the focus of taking your mind off of what's in front of you, literally, and trying to focus on what's behind you takes so much mental energy. So you don't trip and fall like you're feeling with your feet. It's a lot of distraction. So doing that helps a lot. And then if you take it up a notch and go to a farmer carry, with the farmer carry, if the weight is heavy enough, it actually depresses your shoulders and like pulls your shoulders down. So when, when you stress breathe, it's common for things like your traps, your lats, like your pecs, everything to kind of get involved in the raising of your chest because we're mouth breathing and it happens like your everything elevates and then it comes back down. But when you have that heavy ass weight in your hands, those extra muscles, because when we're breathing, it should be like all diaphragm, mostly, not all, but mostly, it should be guiding the way. But when we stress breathe, our shoulders get involved and they're raising up and down. But when you have those weights in your hand and they're pulling your shoulders down, it forces you to slow your breathing down because that diaphragm is doing the whole job. And your muscles that usually help out when you stress breathe are occupied by that heavy ass weight. <laughs> so it helps with regulating your breathing patterns and getting you calmer. So very, very nifty trick. If I do say so myself, I really wish I knew who to give credit for that. I'll try and figure it out and I'll throw it in the show notes if I can find it. Um, and yeah, that's all I had on that. So that is it for this week's episode. I hope that you learned a little something. If you got something out of it, take an action step and implement it in your week this week. And yeah, let me know if it works and I will see you next time. Go kick some ass and have a great week. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a five-star review. If you found the information helpful, go ahead and share it with somebody you think could use it too. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode.